How's it going? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to read chapter 6 to you. Thank you for all of you though, that have turned in your work. Appreciate it. I will be, start, be, I will be putting in grades. I started today. i um, looking at them, so be checking. Okay, chapter 6. Abuelita poured more café into my half-empty cup of coffee. The sweet scent of the canela cinnamon that she boiled along with the coffee filled up the kitchen. We sat in a friendly silence for many moments, watching the sun rise over the Sierra de Los Angeles. We began most mornings that way, ever since Papa and Mama had left years ago. We never talked much. We didn't need to. But the day after I saw Don Clemente, Abuelita had something on her mind, and so did I. Por fin, tu suplicita se te ha consentido. Your wish has come true. Abuelita finally said, I know how much this means to you. She reached around across the table and entwined her fingers with mine. Dark brown age spots and deep blue veins covered the backs of her hand. A strand of gray hair fell out of the bun of the back of her neck. She tucked it back behind her ear with her free hand while her other tightened the grip on mine. Abuelita, I began, I have a question for you. Please, tell me the truth. I was sorry as soon as I said it. Abuelita didn't lie. She just gave me a small smile and nodded. Is it true what Don Clemente told me about Papa? I swallowed hard. Si, mijo. Yes, my son. Por qué, abuelita? Why? Why? Miguel, your papa must have had his reasons, she answered. You're going now. That's what counts. I disengaged my hand from her, stood up, and turned to the window. I know I want to go, but I don't know if I can forgive him. You're too hard on people, Miguel. You're too hard on Elena, abuelita answered. Don't judge your father. I remained unmoving. I gripped the edge of the window sill tightly until my knuckles turned white. I could not talk back to Abuelita. No juzgues, mijo. Don't judge, my son. She repeated firmly. It was as close as she had ever come to scolding me, and it was the end of the conversation. We'll need to slaughter a goat, she said. I want to have a going away party for you. No, Abuelita, I, I protested. Abuelita might need the goat meat later on. Things were tight, really tight. It seemed like a waste to use it up. And I didn't want a party. I didn't want anything, any long goodbyes. I already had my eyes on the linea. I could already feel my feet running, running moving toward la linea. But Abuelita was determined, so we set the fiesta for three days from then, the night before I was scheduled to leave. I spent the rest of the day poring over my travel uh, packet. I memorized the routes and the names that Don Clemente had written, each in his flowing, elaborate script. The sheaf of papers, the envelope with the money, all of it seemed too thin, too small to get to where I needed to go, so far north. But I, I followed Don Clemente's instructions to the letter. I went to the next town, to the uh, supermercado, uh, it's like a super Walmart, to buy the items I needed, a plastic water bottle, comfortable shoes, and a new backpack with compartments so I could store everything. I even got a uh, pouch for the money to wear next to my skin, under my shirt. I sneaked everything into the house when Elena was away and hid them in my secret place behind the wall. And then, for the next three days, I did work for Abuelita that I should have done months before. I hauled, chopped, and stacked a long, a long big pile of wood. I repaired several parts of the fence around the corral. I hit my thumb with a hammer twice, and some of the boards hung a little crooked, but at least it was done. Then I climbed up on the roof to see if I could find the leaks. 
Even with the little rain we got last winter, Abuelita had to place pots under three places where the steady drips of water fell into her kitchen. I patched the leaks poorly. Lo siento, Abuelita. I'm sorry, Grandmother. I apologized to her silently as I worked. The truth was, I was no good as a carpenter. The patches on the roof probably wouldn't last. Finally, I stood and stared at the tomatoes I'd planted two months before. I was an even worse farmer. Bugs had eaten most of them inside out, leaving a gaping hole in the flesh. The tomatoes that had escaped the bug attack were small and shriveled. My chilies next to the tomatoes had puckered up and fallen off before they ripened. I picked one of Elena's tomatoes, growing right next to mine. It was round, red, and warm from the sun. I took a big bite. The juice ran down my chin, sweet as sugar. Elena's chilies had grown fat and shiny and long. I bet you can't grow ones as good as mine, Elena had taunted me in the spring. I took the bet to shut her up. I checked my pants every day. I tried to do what Elena did with hers. I even gave them extra water, but it was useless. I couldn't compete. And that wasn't all. When Abuelita put me in charge of the animals last year, the cow quit, uh, quit giving milk and a goat dropped dead for no reason. Under Elena's care, the cow gave more milk than ever. Good thing we needed the money we'd get from selling it to Senor Gonzalez. Abuelita and I didn't pay enough attention. She said my mind was always somewhere else. Anybody could grow a plant or raise an animal, but Abuelita didn't scold. She didn't even seem to blame me. To Abuelita, both my strengths and weaknesses were facts, as true as the rising sun and the drought that the sun caused. Fíjate, pay attention, she said last week. I hadn't latched the gate and three chickens had disappeared. Elena is younger, and already she can take care of the rancho better than you. There wasn't a bit of rancor in her voice. Abuelita was right, and I didn't care. Each failure I had on the rancho was just more proof to myself that my future lay across La Línea. In California, if I'd ever belonged in San Jacinto, I didn't belong now. Okay, end of chapter six. You guys know the drill. Uh, let's go ahead and turn in the questions. If you want to do them individually each chapter, that's fine. But if you want to go ahead and turn them in, maybe chapter six, seven, eight. When you finish them, turn them in that way. Uh, just do the best you can. Again, keep getting on NX, uh, IXL. Get on Clever to do what the district has put out. And... Hasta mañana. Bye.